Now, in Dundee, a person dies from taking drugs every single week. The grim state of affairs has led to the setting up of a special commission to help reduce the number of lives lost. Its findings are due to be published in the summer. This evening, a documentary broadcast on SDV heard some of the personal stories behind the city's epidemic. I never ever thought that uh, I would bring Holly back to Scotland and Holly would die on the streets of Dundee. There is cheap, ready available drugs that are e easy to access. These are ultimately what's killing people. I was living with somebody that was using and I didn't I didn't touch it for over a year whilst we lived together, but things started going missing from the house. I had no money. We were struggling financially. Emotionally I was broken and I gave in. Nobody knew I had a heroin addiction. It was well hidden for a long time. And as soon as I asked for help, they took away my kids. I grew up in New York. <laughs> if I told some of the stories here to people there, they think it was out of a movie, you know? People getting shot with crossbows, stabbed with swords, like uh, nine out of 10, it's over drugs. I was on drugs from seven, from seven, eight, well, 15. Heroin from 17, so I've not, I've not really had the chance to live my life, to, to be normal. And you can watch the whole of the Finding a Fix documentary on the SCV player. We're now joined from Dundee by Sharon Brand, who co-founded the grassroots group Recovery Dundee. And here in the studio is Kirsten Horsburgh from the Scottish Drugs Forum. Thank you both very much indeed for joining us. Um, Sharon, you were featured in the documentary and you talk about how easy it was to fall into the, the spiral of drug taking and the devastating effects that it had on your life, didn't you? Um, yeah. I mean, how, how, what was the, how easy was it to fall into the cycle then? I mean, I don't think it was easy. I mean, I didn't start using heroin until I was 27. And I'd lived with somebody that was using for over a year before I uh, took, took heroin. But um, my addiction fell quite quickly after that. So, yeah, I um, had devastating state effects for me and my children. And I'm still recovering from that to this day. And, um, I mean, why does Dundee have such a, a problem with drugs? I mean, there's not one answer to that. I think there's many, many issues that Dundee faces. Um, some stem back decades, I think, um, the, the services that have existed um, have been, haven't been up to par until now. I don't, still don't think that they do the job that they're meant to. Um, I think that um, lived experience should be used and utilised and people that have um, got lived experience should be treated with the respect they deserve and be, have the freedom to help people and support them into recovery. Oh, OK. Um, Kirsten, why, why do you think Dundee has, has such a problem? I think a lot of the issues that are faced in Dundee are faced in other areas in Scotland as well. I mean, Scotland holds an enviable title of having the highest rates of preventable and accidental overdose rates in the whole of Europe. Um, so it's expected that when the National Records of Scotland produces a report for 2018, there'll be well over a thousand people have died from, from these deaths. So we're very much facing a public health crisis, but with no apparent crisis type intervention to assist. Do you think when those figures come out, it will force a kind of crisis situation then? Well, I mean, even in 2017, there was a, a total of 934 people had lost their lives. So I don't know what kind of scale this needs to get to before it is seen as what it truly is, which is a public health emergency. So did you welcome the setting up of the Dundee Drugs Commission then, Kirsten? Yeah, I think it's it's useful to have an independent commission looking a fresh set of eyes, looking on a situation. Um, and ultimately what uh, the recommendations are, which I'm not privy 
every time I'm not a member of the group, but um, the recommendations will be relevant to other areas in Scotland. So I guess what I would be hoping would be some of the things that could be introduced across Scotland would be a focus on our treatment services. Sharon's mentioned about treatment services, mm -hmm. particularly looking at um, better engagement and retention for people in treatment when they need it and want it, um, lower access to treatment, so people being able to access treatment quickly and when they require it, rather than having any types of waiting lists for people. And the other thing that we do quite well in Scotland is we have our national naloxone programme, but we can't afford to be complacent about it, and that's a medication that reverses overdoses. OK, Shannon, what do you hope the, the Drugs Commission recommends? Is it all about the treatment services, as far as you're concerned? I mean, I think that um, there's been a lot of focus on methadone in Dundee for many, many years. I think that people should be offered um, different types of treatment um, as soon as they need it, the day they need it, when they come that first time through the door to ask for support, uh, the support should be there. I think the Commission um, is a great thing. I've, I've, I've been part of the Commission for the last year. Um, obviously, I can't talk about the recommendations, but... Um, I hope that what we've learned over the last year can be implemented, not just in Scotland, but uh, nationally, globally, even. Um, your group, Dundee Recovery, would you like to see more of, of, of groups like that? I mean, you're obviously, you obviously think they're very beneficial. 100%, yeah. I think um, I never set out to do what, what, what's happened in the last three years. Um, it wasn't my intention. I wasn't well versed in recovery and I've learned as I've um, worked with people. And I think that um, we need, we definitely need more people to step up that have got lived experience and to use that and uh, to support their communities and to, to build their own recovery communities like we have. Um, I think that um, everybody that's involved with Recovery Dundee has stayed stable and clean over the last two years. And... Uh, we're having a huge impact on the young people of Dundee, which is amazing. And, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to the future. Do you think it's important, Kirsten, to bring in more people who've have been there and done that and, and kind of can bring their experience? Yeah, I think a range of uh, different approaches are needed. I think there's definitely things that we could do differently. Um, and it's not one size fits all. It's not one thing over another thing. It's a whole range of different interventions that are required, definitely. OK, and we'll have to leave it there. But Sharon in Dundee and Kirsten, thank you both very much indeed for joining thank us this evening. Thank you.